The new Skoda Superb has some very clever features, such as an integrated funnel on the windscreen washer ball, so you can fill it dead easy, even if you're a complete moron. Look at that. Didn't miss a thing. You've got a hands-free boot opening and a special hammock for your shopping bags. Look, put your shopping bag in there and it keeps it in place. And I want to show you what this is for as well. Give me your shoe. Give it here. Oi. There we go. Thank you. Look, you can wedge things in place so they don't roll around when you're driving. There's a nice scraper inside the fuel filler cap. Look, scrape, 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 scrape. There's also an umbrella in the door. Look. Perfect day for it. Parasol, obviously. There's little grippers inside the cup holder to hold onto the bottom of your bottle so it's easier to take the lid off one-handed. There is a clip on the windscreen there which will hold your parking tickets firmly in place. And then in here, look, we've got a special little wiper for the infotainment system. So if you get grubby fingerprints on it like that, oh, I think my hair needs a wash. Look, you can wipe it away. <laughs> that was gross. And perhaps my favorite thing is this. In the rear center armrest, if you fold this out, you have a space which will hold your mobile phone so you can watch it while being driven. However, it's not all good. Later on in this video, I'm gonna reveal five annoying things about the Skoda Superb. And of course, I'm gonna do a full in-depth video review on it. So I'll talk you around the exterior, the interior, I'll take it for a drive and give you my verdict on this car. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Let's start this review by talking about the design of the new Skoda Superb. It's got quite a proud looking grille that we chrome around it. If you go for the range topping Laurent and Clement model, it has even more chrome. And we have some sporty elements, these breathers here, look. And they're real, because if you look inside here, you can see the vents where they exit, because aerodynamics do matter to this car for improved efficiency. Moving down the side there, we've got alloy wheels that start 17 inches, they rise to 19s, these are the 18s. It's quite a long car, look at it. But it still looks quite nice, this crease here Ugh. getting hassled by a wasp right <laughs> they help give it a sort of purposeful look round the back it's neat and tidy big skoda logo there skoda's very proud about being skoda now it's more proud about being skoda than it is about being superb and i like the fact look there are no fake tailpipes anywhere it's quite a neat and tidy smart looking car and i quite like it in this metallic red looks good in the sunshine doesn't it in terms of pricing the skoda superb range starts from just under thirty-five thousand pounds this one here with options is just over forty-one thousand pounds here on the inside the skoda superb's design is fairly tasteful not so sure about this though what's that all about though i do like this bit of trim here and you can have different kind of color combinations of trim and materials as well if you like but whatever you go for it's all made from recycled stuff so it's eco-friendly which is good also you've got this new big infotainment screen and it's fairly logical to operate and the speed of it is zippy enough that's all fine and there's some nice features with it as well the first is the fact that your climate controls aren't controlled through it instead you have dedicated dials down here so if you look you can see i can do the temperature there and if i press i can then do the seat heating and you can also get seat cooling as well as an option my favorite thing though is this look you've actually got a dedicated knob for the fan look at that isn't it funny that today we are applauding cars for actually having physical controls for the ventilation system things that cars had years and years ago what they didn't have though was an ability to alter what the knobs did so now i've selected up to four different functions and i can toggle this knob between this the air direction smart climate so it'll just do it automatically or volume control look at that for the stereo anyway all cars get a digital driver's display i'm actually going to go into more detail on that a bit later on because there's something really confusing about it but one thing that i really like a new addition to the skoda superb is this look the gear selector lever it's there on the steering column i much prefer a gear selector lever an automatic gearbox on the steering column it's just so much easier to use when you're maneuvering because you can just go up reverse up drive up reverse rather than messing around here and it means that down here you have more space for your cup holders for your storage and your charging for your mobile phone plus look you've got usb c's in there and they actually have 45 watt capability so they can charge laptops in here there's even more storage so i've already shown you that little wiper there let me just take that out there's your glasses case and then you've got some areas down here some strappage and even look an old school 12 volt socket the storage continues in the glove box look and it's lined with felt so things don't rattle and it's nicely damped speaking of which look most of the controls are nicely damped and the materials feel quality as well 
Look, that's really squidgy. It's nice and yielding for your arm. So is this, look, oh. And because it opens individually, look, you can have access while keeping that one down and vice versa. In fact, it feels really solid, this entire car. Yeah, look, there's no center console wobble here at all. Very well built. Anyway, back to the storage. Look at this, huge door bins. Once again, lined with felt so things don't rattle about. Put in one bottle. Let's get another bottle. Oh, this is the bigger bottle. Let's do a bit of shuffleage. There, look, see, plenty of room in those door bins. And if you look down here, you've got memory functions on the seats. And every single car has massage seats. You can actually pay extra to have better massage seats if you want to. I'm not sure that's entirely necessary, not in a Skoda. Space in the back of the Superb is absolutely superb. So knee room, it's loads of it. Lots of space for your feet and the huge footwells and you can stretch out and get really, really comfy. Also headroom is good. It's even better than on the previous generation car because they've raised the roof slightly. Now, if you want to carry three people in the back at once, look, there is a bit of a hump for the middle person to straddle, but actually it's quite narrow. So there's plenty of room for everyone's feet. The middle seat is reasonably comfy. There is a slight issue though, you see, this car isn't the widest. And because the saloon version's roof like arcs in like that, if you've got adults in the outer two seats, they will end up touching the heads on there. If you want to carry three adults in the back of your car regularly, you might be better off with an SUV, such as a Volkswagen Tiguan. And if you click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or follow the QR code on the screen now, you can check out my review of that car. However, when it comes to fitting the baby seats, brilliant in here. I love the eyes fix angle points, like they just flip up like that. And the back doors open nice and wide. There's loads of space to maneuver baby seat into place and it's so easy to fit. And you really don't have to move the front passenger seat forward at all, even with the bulky rear facing seat, because there's so much room back here. Also, there's eyes fix on the front passenger seat, so you can have your baby next to you when you're driving if you want. We've got some decent practicality. So look here, we've got pockets on the seat backs, numerous kinds of pockets, which is good. We've got two USB C's there. We've got the climate control for the rear on this car and it also has heated outer rear seats. We've got huge door bins. Let me just go grab a bottle just to show you how big they are. Look, lots of space there, which is good. And will the rear windows go all the way down? The true test of whether a car's practical or not. Yes, they do. Well done, Skoda. And in here, look, you have an armrest. You've got cup holders. I've already shown you that bit. And some through loading as well. Yeah, good car this. The boot capacity of the new Skoda Superb is 645 litres. To put that into context, look, you can fit. Oh, let me open the boot. The idea was that I opened it on the key and then we got out and we showed you. But it doesn't seem to open on the key. We're sort of wedged in here. Why didn't they have like the releases like they do in American cars? Um, hmm. Work. No. He's not work. Do you Hold got... the back seats down, crawl out. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> right. That worked. Okay, so Nick, do you want to rescue us? Yeah. Nick, Nick! Well, it's easy. Anyway, like I was saying, it's got an absolutely massive boot. There's plenty of room for everyone in here. Just um, exiting is the fun bit. <laughs> right, because look, there is a bit of a lip to lift stuff over, which can be a pain when you're loading things in and out of the vehicle. I'll tell you what though, there's lots of clever features, such as, as Nick has already demonstrated, you can fold down the rear seats easily by pulling these levers, I'll just do the other side as well. Slight issue though, you can see that ridge. So when you're trying to push things to the front, they can catch on there, so you have to lift them over that to get like bigger items towards the front of the vehicle. Bit of a problem. However, I do like the fact that you've got this, like a really tough hook for hanging stuff off. Another feature I like is this, look, deployable tow hitch, and it pops. Oh yeah, the car's happy to see me. And it can tow 2.2 tons, which is good. Another feature, look, here in the back, the all important 12 volt socket there, and we have some storage in here as well. And underneath here, there's some more storage, though I can see space for a spare wheel, but you don't get one as standard with this car, which I'm sure some Skoda buyers may be slightly aggrieved about. Anyway, that brings me to five annoying things about the new Superb. The controls to scroll through the different menus and functions of the digital driver's display. Really confusing, so you can use this to scroll between different things and then you can flop between different menus like that. And I really don't know what they do. It doesn't seem logical. It's like, what, I don't do that, what's going on? There's some other views I've seen that look different than this and I just can't seem to find them. I guess, I could check the manual, but really, it should be intuitive. You shouldn't have to check a manual. I want to turn that speed warning on. It won't, won't toggle. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Frustrating. 
The hatchback version of the Superb doesn't have an adjustable boot floor, so there's nowhere to store the load cover when you take it out. So you're gonna end up pulling stuff on it and maybe damage it. You can't get the hatchback version of the Superb as a plug-in hybrid. And while you can get the estate version as a plug-in hybrid, the batteries in the boot reduce the boot capacity by a quarter. Believe it or not, you have to pay extra if you want the rear window wiper on the Skoda Superb. Really on a car like this? This should be standard, but now it's £120 and an option you may forget to tick, which will be very annoying. Also, I'm quite surprised that rear side passenger airbags aren't standard. You need to get some family pack for those to be included. Sounds like a big bag of crisps. The reversing camera is really low definition. At least it makes me look younger. You can get the Skoda Superb with a 150 horsepower, 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine. That's front wheel drive. Then there's a two litre turbocharged petrol engine with 265 horsepower. That one's four wheel drive. There's also two diesels, both two litre, one with 150 horsepower, front wheel drive. And then there's one with 193 horsepower, which is all wheel drive. Regardless of which version you go for, all models have a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. No manuals are available. Anyway, let's see what this new Skoda Superb hatch is like to drive. The first thing you notice is that the suspension does feel a little bit on the taut side. So you feel bumps a little bit more than you'd imagine you would. You kind of think a car like this is going to be all soft and squidgy, but this is a little bit firmer. It's not uncomfortable, it's just not quite what you expect. Really, I would spend the extra to have the adaptive dampers fitted because they have a comfort mode and then it is more soft and floaty and squidgy, which is what you want from a car like this. The rest of it though, for driving around town, yeah, really good. So visibility forward, great. That's a bit of a blind spot there, but the pillar itself isn't too bad. If you the back window is good and the door mirrors are a decent size, not too large, not too small. The only problem is the rear three quarters has a bit of a blind spot. Now, this is a big old car, so you might think maneuvering it is a pain, but actually no. You see the turning circle is 11.1 meters, which is really good for a car this size. I'm actually going to pop up the parking cameras and I'm disappointed I haven't got the optional surround view cameras because they will help with this maneuver. I'm going to give it a go. Some motorbikes are waiting for me. I'm going to wish they're not. I'm going to do a UE. Sorry guys. Am I going to go up the curb? I can't tell because I don't have the surround view cameras. Don't hit the curb and curb the wheel. I don't think, well maybe I will. Maybe I will actually make this round. We'll have to rely on the parking sensors but that is amazing really. You know, a car this size, being able to do that, and the steering, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, it's just right for doing those maneuvers. And I didn't have to do it then, but that gear selector, like reverse to drive, is so easy to do that if I did have to do the three-point turn, flipping between the gears is very easy with that. The only complaint I have is if you're pulling away from a standstill, sometimes this gearbox can be a bit sluggish to pull away occasionally, but when it comes to braking, yeah, the brakes are smooth and progressive, which is what you want. Let's see how responsive this engine and gearbox combination is. So I'm at 40 miles an hour. This is a 70 mile an hour road. Drop it. Slight pause, but not too bad and we're off. And look at that, 70. It feels quite effortless. It's a diesel engine. Do you know what? I've missed diesel engines in cars. They just suit cars like this. Now, when you're on the motor and you want that kind of torque, just makes it easy for cruising at speed, lower revs. I mean, to be fair, when you put your foot down, you do get that rumble of the diesel. It's not as quiet as a petrol, but it just seems a bit more punchy, like when you're going at higher speeds. So for sustained driving on the motorway, if that's what you're going to be doing with your Superb, get their diesel. Also, it gives good economy. So this one's averaging 43 three miles to the gallon and that's through quite varied use. I think if you're just cruising on the motorway you should be able to get 50 miles to the gallon out of this thing. When you are cruising at speed it's a reasonably quiet car, not much road noise, not much wind noise, it's great. The seats once again a bit like the suspension a touch on the firm side but not uncomfortable. I could definitely do lots of miles in this. I should point out that as you go quicker the suspension seems to smooth out. It's only really then at town speeds that it feels a bit on the tour side. Now you don't expect a Skoda Superb to be fun to drive. That's not what you're buying it for, but you are going to want it to be able to cope with going around corners without it toppling over and feeling all unwieldy. So let's have a little go. I'm actually going to put the gearbox into sports mode and oh, do you know what? I'm going to change myself using the paddles. All I'm looking for is stability, grip, and I had it there through that corner. This car does actually feel very composed through the bends. I'm surprised with how well it handles. It handles easily as well as it needs to. 
mean, look at that. Whoop. I got a bit enthusiastic there, and we got a little bit of tire squirrel, but it was still predictable. It still went round, and it didn't lean too much either. I'm impressed. I mean, a BMW 3 Series is more fun. You know, that's got rear-wheel drive. This is front-wheel drive. It's just got more steering feel and just feels sportier. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that, click up there or follow the QR code. But really, what you're expecting from a Skoda Superb, this more than delivers. I mean, the only thing is maybe, is this. <laughs> the diesel getting a bit shouty when you floor it. And that brings me on to the final test. Skoda says this version of the Superb will do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 9.2 seconds. I'm going to time it myself using the specialist timing gear. I'm just going to floor the accelerator. Three, two, one, go. A bit of a hesitation away from the line. That's that gearbox again, but here we go. Let's pull it now. And we have 9.1. I wonder if it would be better if I brake boosted it. It's got a launch control. What? Really? On a diesel super, a lot? Brilliant. Super by name, super by nature. Okay, so here we go. Now with added improved launch control. That was definitely better. Yep, 8.58 huge improvement that does actually illustrate the problem with the gearbox in a way that when you have it in launch control it pulls away really quickly because it's sort of like ready for it but when you try and pull away just by flooring the throttle it can be a little bit sluggish now you don't have that with a normal torque converter automatic gearbox but this has a dual clutch system and it's just a little bit more complicated in the way it works So then, what's my final verdict on the new Skoda Superb? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you're after a mile-munching, practical, value-for-money, well-made hatchback, you should go right ahead and buy the 2-litre, 150-horsepower version of the new Skoda Superb. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to watch some other videos, click on the windows. And if you want a silly car the easy way, click on the CarWow logo and have dealers all across the country bid on it. By the way, I figured out why the boot wouldn't open off the key when we were in it. It was because I still had the ignition on. The ignition is now off. Watch, this is what should have happened. Yes, I am a total idiot. You can shut it on the key as well, look. Bye-bye. See you next time.